Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. The project for this week is inspired by an article in American Woodturner by Bark Hunter back in June of 2023, uh, sending spiral vase. Uh, it was an interesting article and Ken, a friend of mine in the local club, compared notes and he actually tried it. Uh, he thought it was a grueling experience. I anticipated that it would be quite a grueling experience also because the cutting process was quite intense and tedious because every ring had a different number of segments including odd numbers which is generally not a good thing in segmented turning. Uh, so I was hesitant to do it myself but after Ken did it I said well okay let me see if I can figure out another way of doing it. So I recently acquired a 40 watt laser so let's give it a try to see if we can do this ascending spiral vase using the laser to cut the segments, which I think would be a whole lot easier than sawing them. As with any project, particularly a segmented project, the first step is to decide on a design. In this case, I use Lightburn software for my LED laser. The design is simple, deciding on diameter for the bottom, top, and widest point, then the overall height and height at the widest point. Then the program's Bezier curve function draws a smooth curve. But then the harder part. I drew rectangles along the wall and used the measuring functions in the software. But nothing beats a spreadsheet to do the other necessary calculations and to display the specifications for the 16 set rings. This is even more difficult for this project since the number of segments per ring changes with each ring from 5 to 16 segments. Usually, I only need the segment length. This time, I also need the angles for each ring. Now back to the laser software. For the first ring, I need five segments with an inner diameter of 1.15 and an outer diameter of 2.65 inches. In the software, I drew a circle for the inner and outer diameters, then draw a horizontal line from the center and a bit longer than what I will need. Then duplicate and rotate it 72 degrees. It helps in this software to connect the lines into a triangle. Then use the intersect command to get the slice containing the outer diameter. Then subtract command to eliminate the circle for the inner diameter. One benefit from using the laser is that I can label each segment with the layer and segment number. This is important because each segment ring is different. Segment species are unique and segment order matters a lot. Then the somewhat tedious task of creating all segments and grouping them by species. As tedious as this sounds, the typical way to saw segments for this style of project is many more times more tedious, in my opinion. Then off to laser cut all the segments with widely varying results. Well, it's time to saw, but hmm, there are some other things that you know, I think everyone should know about a laser. Yes, it can cut these segments out of this uh, cherry, in this case, uh, out of this oak, yes. Even this walnut, uh, although there's maybe a tad more soot with the walnut, but, hmm, this bloodwood, it couldn't get through. The laser advertises that it can cut 20 millimeter thick wood which is you know a bit over three quarters that was uh, I tried it I found it difficult to cut three quarters inch wood in the various woods that I would be using I scaled it back to half inch to see if I could do a little bit better but still blood wood it's denser they measure on basswood so that's totally different so density and color matter since it's a blue laser and in fact, with this blood wood, it actually triggered the fire sensor in the laser. When I tried uh, heat treated ash, it really flamed up and I could not cut that flame treated or heat treated ash. So there are some issues with the laser. Uh, it can cut some woods, it has a hard time cutting other woods. So be advised. Usually for ring assembly, I use the rub joint and split ring techniques. However, for this project, my segments are as perfect as they can be. So I glue the segments all at once into the ring. 
After assembling the ring to check order and sizing, I wrapped masking tape around the perimeter. My tape was wider than the ring height, so I clamped them together while I tore off the excess width before laying it out again to apply glue. Then wrap up the ring, check alignment, and clamp the band clamp. I did not dare start gluing rings to the base until all rings were finished. With the difficulties in cutting out some of the species, I almost scrapped the project. At this point, however, I could have replaced any ring exactly. Then I can start gluing rings to my waist block. Usually, I offset the segments by half a segment. However, this time I offset by one third of a segment and the segment arc is decreasing with the segment count increasing with each ring. I did not dare glue it from opposite ends of the vase either. As I add rings to the vase, I clean out the interior to get very close to my drawing. The exterior is less critical at this point, but this may be my last chance to reach the inside of the lower rings for sanding. Since these rings have a very good center, I designed and printed a spring-like mechanism. My engineer sons could probably call this a compliant mechanism. Each will accommodate a quarter inch range in diameter. They work great. Finally, my vase is glued up. I let it sit a week to allow the moisture content to stabilize again from the moisture from the glue. This should help prevent feeling glue lines in the finished vase. Turning the vase at this point is almost anticlimactic. However, it is mostly a repeat of all the other sessions as each ring was glued on. Hollow the center with a box scraper and a round nose scraper. I'm a bit worried about hanging out so far from the spindle. I would feel more comfortable had I mounted my steady rest. Then move to the exterior and tool it down with the spindle gouge. A faceplate on the live center provides stability. Then move on to sanding, starting with 80 grit on a sanding board to make sure the curve flows nicely without bumps. Then wipe it down with Wipe-On Poly even though the base is not quite ready. I have found that Wipe-On Poly blends well when I tackle the previously unfinished sections. Finally, it is time to part the vase from the waste block with a parting tool. However, even though I have a faceplate to stabilize or catch the vase, I check it out and pull out a saw for the final bit. I do not want a UFO that looks like my vase. I love my donut chuck. A hole in the base plate accepts a plug to center the vase. This time I also added another centering cup on the life center to keep the project centered while I tighten the three bolts that hold everything together. Another insert adapts the hole down to different sizes while some masking tape provides some insurance against dings. Just a little spindle gouge work now before sanding, signing, and more wipe on poly. Well, it is complete. It has a spiral. Uh, I've made a few mistakes, but uh, that's okay. Uh, it, I had scaled it back from what uh, the author had done, Mark had done in his, and I'm glad I did because it was quite a grueling project in the end. And I'm not sure I'm thrilled with the laser cut process because if you look closely in here, well, on the walnut, it doesn't matter so much, but uh, here on the uh, uh, hickory pecan, I've got a distinct scorch mark in there. It had a hard time cutting that. It actually did a nice job on this cherry of highlighting the differences, so maybe it's a go for cherry. But uh, there's got to be another way of doing this, and maybe I've got to cut my cut loose my CNC router and see if we can do it a little bit better. So. It was, I think, successful. I hesitate to do it again on the laser, 
uh, maybe different wood selection. I didn't get the contrast that I wanted because I couldn't get like blood wood in there. So we'll see you again for another experiment a bit later. But meanwhile, subscribe and like and comment. I appreciate your comments and be sure to wear your full face shield. Safety is important even in segmented turning.